the last 60 years has really been when we've made accessible to the whole world food, water and energy. To go back 60 years, electricity was something that was an exclusive benefit to have. Access to medicines at large scale, that was rare. And it's been chemical and biological engineering that's really led supplying that to the world. We're really at an inflection point now where we've had all these great discoveries, but we're now learning they're not really sustainable and that they can't support the number of people that are living on this planet. So there's a huge challenge here to completely reinvent how we think about energy, how we provide food and medicine to the entire planet. We need to move towards a circular economy from being a linear economy, because we have to think about the end of life of products. And that is going to play a very important role where climate engineers will be significant in what they can contribute. Chemical engineering, it means conducting search, monitoring HDR students, and make contributions to the advancement of this field, especially in the design and optimization of different chemical parcels. Chemical and biological engineering at Monash is special in many ways. We are 60 years old. We're one of the oldest departments of chemical and biological engineering in the country, and also the number one in Australia and in the top 40s in the world. In the last 60 years, the department has evolved from predominantly fossil fuels driven research and teaching to renewables feedstock based research and teaching. We have world class research facilities. We are actually solving a lot of the research problems in the world, and we include that into our teaching. That's how we are different than others, because we are training future sustainable engineers who are going to contribute towards a sustainable future. The Department of Chemical and Biological Engineering at Monash University is renowned for its position in, in the country, but also globally. That's because we work in a very diverse range of fields. We not only have engineers, we have chemists, we have biologists. We have people working from nanotechnology level to waste to food area, biochemical area. It's incredibly diverse. We have a diversity and also we have a very great inclusion. So everyone's voice is heard and everyone is just working collaboratively for the whole department. This is what the beauty of chemical and biological engineering, the moon as we are the family, we innovate for the betterness of this earth and we innovate for the betterness of this country. We've got great sex students. They're engaged, they're smart, they want to create the future. This is a great bunch of students because it has a large number of people with industry experience we're able to teach our students uh, exactly what industry requires, the additional skills that the industry requires. Sometimes they call soft skills. There's nothing soft about it. The whole idea is to make our students employable the moment they step outside the campus. That's where we can make the most impact because our research can develop a lot of new knowledge, but our students are in the end the ones that are going to go out in industry and, and all over the world to implement those technologies and their, and their learning. Monash is providing them with the skills they need to, to really face this uncertain but really exciting future. So aside from all their courses that they do, they also have fantastic new things like student teams they can get involved in and actually work at the university on massive problems, you know, ranging from carbon capture through to clean water production. There's all sorts of new opportunities for them to practice their completely new skills in a completely new environment. Well, I'm excited to be part of Chemical and Biological Engineering at, at its 60 years of celebration is because this is an old department with a new vision. And so it encourages younger people like me towards sustainability. And that's what matters. <laughs>